Cool, a little quick review. Three laws of thermodynamics. What was the first law that we dealt with a while ago, last section? Yeah, conservation of energy, energy of an isolated system is constant, yada, yada, yada. Cool, in the past, but what is the second law? What's the second law of thermodynamics? It's about entropy, and entropy what? Increases when? So you're going to see this worded in a couple of different ways. So your book worded it very generically and said, entropy tends to increase in an isolated system. And then it got a little more specific. And I'm going to get a little more specific from the get-go. So we can pretty much break this down. And basically, we're going to talk about for a spontaneous process. Delta S of the universe is positive. So the change in entropy is going to be positive. And so entropy we associate with randomness or disorder. It's not the same thing exactly. It turns out it has a very mathematical quantitative definition. But more randomness and, and disorder tends to correspond with more entropy. So for a spontaneous, this is supposed to say, process, delta S of the universe is positive. There are exactly two things in the universe. What are they? System and surroundings, right? So the system is what you're looking at. The surroundings is everything else. And so we could break that up and say the delta S of the system plus the delta S of the surroundings total has to come out positive. Now be careful, because the system itself can be negative. The surroundings itself could be negative. But by the time you add the two together, it's got to come out positive. So there's one other corollary here I'm going to add into this. This is for a spontaneous process. So and for a spontaneous process, we'll see that means you know, processes that have a delta G value that's negative later on. However, I'm going to tell you that delta S of the universe for a reversible process is zero. So usually say that you know, delta S of the universe is greater than or equal to zero. Well, here's the difference. For a reversible process, it's exactly zero. For a spontaneous process, that's when it's going to come out positive. What is a reversible process? So a reversible process is a process that pretty much proceeds almost through equilibrium the whole way through. So we perturb the system and just barely take it out of equilibrium and then let it go back to equilibrium. And barely take it out again and let it go back. So, and so it's almost at equilibrium the whole way through. Well, if a reaction's at equilibrium, what's delta G? You guys recall from Gen Chem, maybe? Zero. Which means, is that spontaneous? No, nope, it's not spontaneous. It's not non-spontaneous. And so for a reversible process, this is not necessarily a spontaneous process. It has been infinitesimally removed out of equilibrium. So for all intents and purposes, it's not really spontaneous. So that's the difference here. This one is one that's proceeding through equilibrium states the whole time, whereas this one actually has a negative delta G value, and the delta S of the universe will come out positive. That's your second law. Rather than wait and introduce it later, we're just going to get the third law out of the way as well. What is your third law of thermodynamics? Entropy of a perfectly ordered crystal at zero Kelvin is zero. Is zero. What's the lowest temperature possible? Zero Kelvin, or what's that in Celsius scale? Negative two seventy three point one five Celsius. Where does that? Where do we get that from? So you actually derived it in the last section. And we kind of extrapolated out theoretically. So in all substances, you know, as you go down to temperature, so reach the same value, extrapolate it out from a couple of different ways. So but what we can see, though, is on entropy as well, you can extrapolate entropy, do a plot of entropy versus temperature, and extrapolate out that as entropy goes down to 0, it hits 0, right as temperature hits 0 Kelvin. 
So, but it only does this for a perfectly ordered crystal. What this means, it's a pure crystal, so, and it's perfectly ordered. So no kind of defects of any sort, anything like that. But that's when it has zero Kelvin. This is really super helpful. So because if I have the entropy of any substance, the absolute entropy, under any certain condition, by calculating entropy changes to another condition, I can then get the entropy there. So if I told you that from this perfectly ordered crystal at zero Kelvin, I did some changes to a substance, heated it up maybe, did, did a little whatever, and the change in entropy was positive 123 joules per Kelvin. Well, then how much entropy did it end up with? Well, it started with zero. The change of the process was positive 123. So how much entropy did it end up with? 123. The initial plus the change gets me there. And so we can actually calculate out the entropy, the absolute value of the entropy, for any substance because of this lovely rule. Notice we actually can't get you the absolute enthalpy of anything. I have no idea. We can only calculate enthalpy changes, not actually the H values. I can calculate delta H for a process, but how much H did the reactants have and how much H did the products have, we never know. But for enthalpy, different story. I can actually know how much S the reactants have and how much S the products have because of this third law. Cool. All right, um, cool. So now that we've kind of talked about entropy, let's define it real quick. And we're gonna define it as delta S in this case. And delta S is equal to Q of the reversible process over the temperature at which it's carried out. This assumes it's being done at constant temperature. That is the actual mathematical definition of entropy we are gonna use over and over and over and over again.